Meet Davis. Hi. Davis is from Pollock, South Dakota. Yep. We took Davis from Pollock to fish for Pollock in Alaska. Sure did. The same wild-caught Pollock in a McDonald's filet of fish sandwich. Uh-huh. There were boats, nets, waves. And fish. And some delicious filet of fish sandwiches. So you could say Davis is one Paul lucky guy. Good one. Thanks, Davis. Catch some Pollock of your own with McDonald's filet of fish Fridays. Just $1.99 for a limited time. Price and participation may vary. Cannot be combined with any other offer or any combo meal. Blog Talk Radio. Hey, folks, how you doing? Happy day, happy Saturday. I know you're saying happy weekend, so uh, I am glad to have you with us, and you know, I think we're going to have another great conversation as we always do. You know what? Matter of fact, I know we're going to have a great conversation, especially it's only 57 degrees outside, a little cloudy, but, you know, I'll take it, I'll take it, I'll take it. We've had some cold weather in other places and some warm weather. So this is kind of a happy medium. I'll I'll take it. I'm not complaining. Uh, And we love turning negatives into positives anyway. And I'm glad more than anything that you're here with us, wherever you may be listening to our podcast, whether it's in Harlem in the United States or outside the United States, we love to have you here with us. Uh, I'm Danny Tisdale. You're listening to the Danny Tisdale show. And, you know, if you uh, want to be part of the conversation if you've listened to the conversation and want to respond definitely hit us up at twitter at twitter.com backslash hwmag and also on, of course on facebook at facebook.com backslash hwmag and also don't forget that you can also go to our other facebook page and that is harlem world magazine and you know sometimes i mention this and sometimes i don't mention this but we have a very lively history Facebook page, which is Harlem History. It's facebook.com backslash Harlem History. We've got another 5,000 folks that are on that page. And uh, dare I say, and I leave for last, our huge site, which is harlemworldmag.com or harlemworldmagazine.com, where you can get all the information uh, from everything that we do, from our Harlem World gear to our Harlem World gallery, you name it, it's there. And, of course, uh, the Danny Tisdale Show, our our podcast. And uh, without further ado, let's get to the whole reason we're here. And that's our our guest. And today we have Tim McChristian. He's the new executive director of Madison Square Boys and Girls Club. He has nearly four decades of experience in international business and philanthropy. Uh, rising to senior leadership positions at IBM and Dunn and Bradstreet. Uh, He will spearhead Madison's efforts to open its new Pinkerton Clubhouse in Harlem. I understand it's under construction, uh, which will be Madison's largest and most advanced facility to date. Of course, he'll tell us more about that. Mr. Christian joins Madison from uh, uh, the American Leadership Foundation, where he served as executive director also served on boards of A Better Chance, ABC program, if I, I, as I understand it, uh, student sponsorship program, and the Third Good Marshall College Fund. Mr. Christian received his Bachelor's of Science from Yale University, has a Master's of Business Administration and Finance from Marshall School of Business at University of Southern California, USC. Okay, we'll talk football maybe. Uh, he lives in Harlem with his wife. Uh, Debbie, and he has two children, and thank you, Tim McChristian, for being here with us. How are you? Great. I'm doing great, Danny. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you for uh, taking uh, time out of your busy schedule and being here with us and away from family and all that good stuff, Uh, and congratulations uh, on your new position as uh, executive director. Great. Thank you very much. And I, to follow on your point, I did an eight-mile walk this morning through Central Park and couldn't believe how good the weather is. So oh, today is a good day. It's amazing. Right, right, right. Well, and I love the way that you're, you're balancing the, the wellness with that uh, work. It's a, it's a smart way to approach it. So tell us about uh, what's happening and, how, well, first of all, how long have you been at the, uh, the, the new executive director job? I just finished my fifth week, so I started um, okay. in – Congrats. October and just, just finished the fifth week, and it's been exciting. It's been everything I was expecting it to be and then some. Well, that's, uh, that's fabulous. And I know, uh, you know, I'll 
get into something more specific because uh, I've noticed as I kind of stand back from looking at your resume that you've made a transition from, uh, I think, the for-profit to the non-profit. And, you know, matter of fact, I'll go with this question. Was that a strategic effort on your part to make a transition from the for-profit to the non-profit, or it just happened that way? No, that's a great point, Dan. It's one of the things when I have a chance to tell my story, I I emphasize, I, I'm not one of these folks that woke up after retiring from the corporate world and said, now what am I going to do? Oh, let me try a nonprofit, which is nothing, there's nothing wrong with that. But I was blessed early in my life uh, with an opportunity from a particular program that you mentioned, the ABC program that changed my life and allowed me to have educational opportunities I never would have had. And so I knew early on that I wanted to eventually give back directly by leading a nonprofit. So I've been able to be on the boards of nonprofits for probably the last 20 to 25 years, programs like the mm. A Better Chance program, like the Thurgood Marshall College Fund, you know, like the Student Sponsorship Program, which is actually based in South Africa, to help me build the knowledge and expertise in how nonprofits work. So when I did retire from IBM in the corporate world, I'd be ready to go jump in and actually operationally lead one, and which is what I've been able to do starting with African Leadership Foundation and now with the Madison Square Boys and Girls Club. You know, uh, uh, Tim, um, uh, can I call you Tim or Mr. McChristian? Yeah, yeah please. More no, call, okay. call me Tim, please. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I, you know, as I mentioned to you earlier, too, is that I freestyle a, a little bit and, and will a- ask you questions that I may not have prepared you for. And I just heard you say that uh, a better chance prepared you for what you're doing now. Can you t- uh, talk about that a little bit more? Yeah, the whole purpose of the A Better Chance program was to give students of color access to the top educational institutions in America, um, mm. the boarding schools. And it, was, it came out of the Civil Rights Act and the Voting Rights Act and all the activity in the 60s where we were trying to say, how come we don't have a level playing field right. for people of color? And it turns out there were some – written and unwritten rules about how do you succeed in America that we were never allowed to access. And one of them was education. And it turns out the Ivy League schools in particular, Harvard, Yale, and Princeton, were getting almost half their incoming freshman students from six private boarding schools, Mm -hmm. Andover, Exeter, Choate, Groton, Deerfield, Mm -hmm. and Mount Hermon. And they said, we'd like to get more diversity, but we don't know where to find them. Well, if you're getting half of your freshmen from only six schools, it's pretty obvious where the problem lays. So the ABC program was founded to get students of color into that pipeline. So I went to Phillips Academy Andover, which is considered the most prestigious prep school in America even today. And the best example of senior year was my the last all-boys class before I went co-ed. There were 240 boys that graduated. 44 went to Harvard. 40 went to Mm. Yale, 38 went to Princeton. That was the way the game was played. And so by being in that pipeline through the ABC program, I said, hey, I'll go to Yale. So again, it it affirmed, though, how the games are being played and how we must always stay focused on ensuring we're in that pipeline to have a chance to compete for these opportunities. Because we know when we can compete, we can win. But many times we don't even know there's a game going on. Yeah, and, and I, I, you are right on uh, uh, on point there because certainly so that if the playing field is level, well, we usually do a pretty, can I say, damn yep. good job of competing. So yeah, just get um, us in the game. Get it. We got to be in the game, though. That's right. That's right. Uh, it sounds like a great program, and you know, uh, we'll do some follow up on that and uh, uh, add. Uh, what we find uh, uh, for our listeners uh, on the site uh, regarding a better chance sounds like an outstanding uh, program. But I, I want to talk to you about another program, and that is the Madison Square Boys and Girls yes. Club. Can you tell us a little bit about that and how uh, Pinkerton Absolutely. Clubhouse in Harlem kind of comes out of that? Yep. So Madison Square Boys and Girls Club was one of the original Boys and Girls Clubs founded in the late 1800s, um, there were about four other ones, I believe, in Hartford and Boston that formed the National Boys and Girls Club movement, which is very strong today. The national movement has over 1,400 
programs with over 4,000 locations. And Madison Boys and Girls is one of the larger clubs here in New York City. We currently have four clubhouses, two in Brooklyn and then two in the Bronx. The fifth clubhouse is the new Pinkerton Club being built in Harlem on the 155th and Bradhurst which we anticipate opening next September 2018 in time for the school year. So we're very excited about coming into Harlem with this exciting service um, in the community that we're being um, established up there. That, that's fantastic. And uh, it sounds like they've got the, the right person uh, to hit up that uh, program. And um, uh I'll tell you uh, a personal story. I was born and raised in, in Watts, uh, California, and my life-saving experience, uh, really for my brothers and my sisters, uh, was the uh, boys' club uh, out in California. Uh, without it, I don't know what we would have did, uh, mm-hmm. I, you know, going to summer camp, uh, learning how to – you know, work with wood, how to uh, play team sports, just fantastic program. So um, I just wanted to share that with you. But can you tell us a little bit about the demographic of the Boys and Girls Club? Yeah, as I mentioned, the location is on 155th and Bradhurst, a block away from uh, the world-famous Rucker Park. So we're surrounded by the um, yeah, Polo that's... Grounds and Charles Rangel Housing Project. So our demographics right. are – about 66% are African American, 28% are Hispanic or Latino, and the 6% are white, Asian, or identify as more than one race. So, you know, we clearly are in the community, and which is typical of our model. We want to be in the community to provide the services for these typically under-resourced neighborhoods, similar to what we have in Brooklyn and the Bronx. Right, right. Yeah, and I, I wanted to ask a, a little bit about funding, and I, I don't want to really get into the politics of the day, Um, but to ask, is your funding come from, uh, is it in-house or is it from uh, city government or where where does the funding come from to do the great work that you're doing? Well, it's a combination. Um, As I think you're aware, the Boys and Girls Club motto is to first off provide after school and summer programming for kids ages 6 to 18 Mm -hmm. and so we have a program a set of programs that we deliver to those students that we divide up into you know six to nine year olds 10 to 12 and then the teens some programming is funded by um, city and state government some programming is funded by private foundations such as Pinkerton and then the other is through individual uh, benefactors of which we've been very blessed to have some very, very strong financial supporters. So it's really a combination of both private and uh, public funding, but more uh, private. And and um, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, 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 another, I, you know, I'm looking at my list of 500 questions, trying to bring them down to, you know, just the four or five, because I know our time is going to fly by as it uh, is already. Uh, and I, you know, with that, I want to take a quick station ID and let our listeners know they're listening to the Danny Tisdale Show. And of course, I'm Danny Tisdale, and we are having a great conversation. And uh, we want to make sure that you uh, stay in tune with what we're doing. And if you have any questions uh, uh, about our guests or uh, about What we're talking about, you can hit us up at Twitter, at twitter.com backslash hwmag, uh, also on Facebook at facebook.com backslash hwmag, and uh, ask us any questions you may have or any kind of follow-up. And, of course, back to Mr. Tim McChristian, who is the new executive director of the Madison Square uh, Girls and uh, Boys and Girls Club. Uh, I, I wanted to follow up, Tim, and ask you, um, you know, there's a lot of uh, parents listening to the show. I think that's probably about 35% of our audience, uh, uh, listeners who have uh, children. Um, mm-hmm. uh, how 
and I know some of those, let me back up even further, and I know some of them are uh, kids who want to work at the boys' club. Have you guys started taking applications, or have you already filled those positions for those Harlem jobs? No, we're going to have a very detailed staffing plan, again, working backwards from our September 2018 opening. Uh, We anticipate late summer, early summer, um, job postings for many positions, although some of the key positions we already are starting to um, source for. So I would suggest um, you can give my email out um, for interest, but we will formally be doing job fairs um, and also um, job postings on any of the local uh, job sites as we formulate the specific exactly. positions. It's a little early now, but yeah. uh, we would definitely be posting positions and holding job fairs to make the local community aware of the skills we need, which, again, in the perfect world, I hope to source the majority of positions from our local community here because we know the people who are here who are interested in helping us deliver these program services. That's that's fantastic, and you know that uh, we'll be uh, uh, looking for information that we can post for our readers, and I know our readers will be all over that. Um, so yeah, I, I, uh, I hope so. Uh, th- thanks for the for the heads up. Um, and I, I wanted to go back to go forward a, a, a little bit, um, and to um, talk a little bit about you know uh, uh, you as a person and how you balance what you do. Uh, and you've been pretty busy in your business life, but how do you un- unwind, Tim, from uh, the work that you do being a, 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 a husband, being a dad? How do you unwind? Well, you know, as, as I've talked about, I did eight, an eight-mile walk this morning. I've been blessed. I played college basketball. And you know, uh, I was okay. able to stay active, and it, I always say it's easier to stay in shape than it is to get out of you know to, to get in shape when you're out of <laughs> shape. Right. So that's I've been right. able to just stay physically active and keep you know as a priority a work life balance that allowed me to exercise and get up early in the morning and do whatever I need to do. Um, and that's also allowed me to stay connected to my family because it, by getting up early in the morning, I guess is one of these life traits that I learned early on, and I've been able to give it to my kids you get a lot more things done because you have more time in the day. So I never buy into that thing of, yeah, I don't have time to get things done because you typically say if you got up another hour earlier, um, you'd, be, you'd have an hour more to get things done. So I, I always start off bright and early, and that allows me to prioritize the things I need to do, starting with breakfast. <laughs> I'm basic. Right. I exercise, I eat breakfast, then I go do the things I have to do work-wise, which, you know, as a senior executive at IBM for many years, we're very stressful and everything else. But at the end of the day, I walked away and turned it off and moved on to family and enjoying life with, you know, with my wife and anything else that was in front of us for the evening. But I think that prioritization of doing the things that need to get done and allowing enough time to do it is critical. Well, and it sounds like you, uh, and I think you said that, try to find if, if, I don't know if balance is the right word, but try to find some kind of balance. And I heard you say, turn it off when you get home or at least, Slow it yep. down, I guess. Yeah, but I wouldn't even use the word find balance. I'd say prioritize balance, right? Because if uh-huh. you don't prioritize family, if you don't prioritize personal time, many jobs these days will consume your all available time unless you are able to say, here's what I'm going to start and here's what I'm going to stop. And that right. makes it a priority right. because then that says, if I know I got to start and I got to stop, I'm going to get it done in the available time, which lets me concentrate a lot more, and I can be productive when I concentrate. Mm-hmm. That's, that's uh, really, really good, and, and I will use that as a segue. Uh, there may be someone uh, listening to this conversation, and uh, they're saying to themselves, you know, uh, uh, Mr. McChristian uh, really found a, a great balance in his uh, uh, work life as we just get finished talking about your personal life, uh, what advice would you give someone who, uh, you know, wants to follow in your footsteps, you know, uh, transitioning from the for-profit world to the non-profit world, and you sound like a guy who's, you know, uh, uh, pretty happy. What advice would you give someone who, you know, wants to follow in your uh, Stacy Adams? 
<laughs> well, first, just find what you, you know, you have to be passionate about something. And, you know, as I gave my examples of my story where, you know, specific programs allow, change my life, it's very easy to stay connected to programs similar to that. So I think that's the first thing you have hmm. to find is what, what makes you happy. If you weren't, you know, let's say it another way, if you weren't getting paid to do it, what, would, what kind of things would you still enjoy doing? And that starts to narrow down things that excite you, things that, you know, you got to be passionate about. You know, you do get paid in the nonprofit world, but typically it's less than, you know, in the for-profit world. So right. money right. won't be – if money is not usually the driving force of people who are committed, you know, same with teaching or many other services that are needed, but you have to have your heart in it also. And so I think that would be the first and most important piece of advice is understand what really makes you happy and passionate and then seek ways to, to explore that. And the nonprofit world is always looking for talented people who are committed to whatever cause that is, whether it's health care, education, you know, social services or whatever. They're always looking for talent, but they're looking for people who are really committed to that mission. Uh, and that's a really, really great advice, especially following your passion. And uh, it sounds like, uh, you know, someone uh, – uh, somewhere along in your life uh, has inspired you. Was there anyone uh, that stands out in, in your life that uh, in, inspired you to do the kind of work you're doing and to be the kind of person you are? Well, I have to say my mother, just because from a timing standpoint, when this A Better Chance program um, came along, neither of us knew anything about it. My father had just passed away, so she was a widow, mm-hmm. having, trying to figure out what to do with two kids. But she saw this program and the theme of a better chance and said, hey, go for it. And when I wanted to quit and say I'm lonely, I'm cold, I don't like this place because nobody looks like me, she said, figure it out. It's a better chance than what you had here. And, you know, sure enough, you know, it, it worked. But her having the courage and the vision to say, go for it, I believe you can do it, it really allowed me to do the things I've been able to do in my life. Uh, it sounds fantastic, and that doesn't surprise me. The moms are uh, always seem to do great work, um, and I yeah. know you are a, a Harlemite, um, and I always love to ask uh, folks uh, as our almost final question is: uh, what, <laughs> What's your favorite place in Harlem? If you have one, I'm sure you do. Is there a favorite place that you? Yeah, have I do. I I say one of the nicest experiences I continue to have here is I'm, I'm sitting here right now looking at Marcus Garvey Park and during the uh, summer when the classical theater of Harlem oh, was on the oh. Shakespeare in Harlem hip-hop Shakespeare right. and That's all right. that sitting there on a beautiful evening you know just enjoying the weather enjoying watching theater amongst our people is one of those experiences that you say this is special so that's probably one of the highlights is just the summer, you know, the summer um, classical theater of Harlem experience right here at Marcus Garvey Park. And and I, I, I give you uh, your props on that because you are uh, 150% on point with that. And I have uh, done that many, 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 many times throughout the summer or, or just year round in general. And yep. uh, uh, Tim, you know, we're at those last five minutes here. Uh, as a matter of fact, we're in our last two minutes. And with that, <clears throat> can you give the URL or any other contact information where our readers, our listeners, can stay abreast of what's happening with the construction of the Absolutely. Clubhouse? Yes. Yep. Our website is www.madisonsquare.org. One word, madisonsquare.org. And we will keep everyone updated. We have some great uh, pictures of the site under construction available. Sure. We'll also be posting our job schedule there also as we, um, as we come closer to the opening next year. That, that will be the place to go um, as we post jobs, although, as I said, we will be very visible. Um, also with you, Danny, we'll make sure that you're on our distribution list. So, so when the job right, postings are, are ready, we will share them with you and your audience as well as job fairs and um, other activities to make sure the local community knows what's available. Well, and I, I, I thank you, Tim, for that. And uh, and more so, I thank you for taking time out of your schedule and uh, being on the show with us and talking to our 
our wonderful uh, listeners. And again, congratulations on the position. And uh, I definitely think they've got the right person for the job. I can hear the commitment uh, uh, in your voice and um, I really look forward to uh, your work that you're going to be doing in Harlem. And thanks for being on the show. Have a great weekend, man. Great. Thank you very much. Have a good day. All right. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Well, folks, uh, there you go. Uh, uh, another person who's doing great work in this great city uh, of Harlem. And uh, don't forget to hit us up with any kind of uh, information, responses uh, regarding the show at uh, twitter.com backslash hwmag or uh, at Facebook on Harlem World Magazine uh, or hwmag. Thanks again for listening in and have a great rest of your day. Uh, Great that you can be with us. And don't forget to uh, be with us next week as we have a, uh, another uh, great conversation. Have a great rest of your day. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Meet Davis. Hi. Davis is from Pollock, South Dakota. Yep. We took Davis from Pollock to fish for Pollock in Alaska. Sure did. The same wild-caught Pollock in a McDonald's filet of fish sandwich. Uh Uh-huh. There were boats, nets, waves. And fish. And some delicious filet of fish sandwiches. So you could say Davis is one Paul lucky guy. Good one. Thanks, Davis. Catch some Pollock of your own with McDonald's filet of fish Fridays. Just $1.99 for a limited time. Price and participation may vary. Cannot be combined with any other offer or any combo meal. The Starlight Lounge presents An Evening with the Progressive Box. Oh, what a great audience. Let's dim the lights for this next one. Nope, too much. Ah, there it is. Gotta get things just right. Like Progressive's Name Your Price tool. Tell us what you want to pay and we help you find coverage options that fit your budget. And now, the mood is right. Wait, the lights are back on again. Trudy, can you? And now it's completely dark. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law.